Hey guys, it's good to be back. Hope everyone had a lovely Christmas break and, um, well, as good as you can <laughs> with yeah, everything with that's everything going, on. going on. You know, it's not ideal. Yeah, you know? but we're doing a story today that's actually written by one of the DMs that well, we we play with. with. But he was a player in this, and um, we do we are referenced at one point in the story, which uh-huh. is kind of nice. You'll get that at the end. Stay to the yeah, end like, for, we, for lo- the long winded story. <laughs> yeah, we we do a bit of backstory at the very end. But like, hope you guys enjoy this one. It was it's nice because we haven't done. A story time light up where we've actually been in, in ages, to be honest with you. Yeah, been Not quite since a while. Gar- one of Garblue's ones. Yeah. So I like, hope you guys enjoy this. Let's get into it. Zoss Goes to Orc World by User Consisting Fiction. Be in a 5th edition Spelljammer server. Be me, Zoss, lawful evil hobgoblin war mage, recently discharged from Hobgoblin Navy for nothing at all. Stop asking. <laughs> like, that's, a, that's a whole point of backstory. It's like, <laughs> it's like, like it happened, okay? Have no money. Go mercenary. Walk into a seedy space tavern. See a human woman drinking and talking to a robot monkey. Fuck it. Go over there. Drop down some playing cards. She's an artificer and a ship's captain looking for a crew. Perfect. Joined by an orc cleric. Bond with captain over military life. Bond with cleric over shared love of books. Tell them I'm writing my memoirs. Talk to the cleric about Maglu Biet. Hobgoblin daddy of war and leadership. He's not familiar. What the fuck? Proselytize about the virtues of Maglu Biet. Joined by an orc artificer. Card game is going well. The captain is approached by a man in a loincloth. Hands her a sealed letter. Who let their eunuch off the leash? The eunuch jumps out of the tavern window. <laughs> what did I get myself into, <laughs> Dot well, why, why does that sound like every single one of Jonathan's <laughs> quest givers? Yeah. Every single one of Jonathan's quest givers <laughs> always happens to be like, you know, the cur- courier from, uh, what was it, Skyrim? That's the, exact, that's the token that yeah. he uses. Like, yeah, uh, here you go, gone, gone away real quick. Yeah, yeah, you're needed. Yeah. The letter is from a lich who just took over a dinosaur planet. Oh, uh, for God's sake. Look, we had nothing to do with that, okay, guys? We had nothing to do with that. And I didn't. <laughs> Some shenanigans by another party on the server. <laughs> look, 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 look. We'll explain after, okay? We are invited to join him and do some work. I don't discriminate against undead employers. I sign up. Captain leads us to her ship. Seal off to Dino World. Along the way, go through an asteroid field. Nobody on the ship knows how to use navigator skills. <laughs> what the fuck? We have to make a crash landing on another planet. This never happened in the military. Barely make a crash landing with little damage. Happen to land right next to a battle between orcs and humans. Huge Etons throwing rocks. Some start to take an interest in us. I'm the first to get my shit together. Face down two battling armies who don't know whose side we're on. I mean, like, these are mostly, like, orky, so, you know. Yeah. I have to do something. I use prestidigitation to make a bugle sound and shout, We have arrived! Apparently, the captain had been here on a previous crash landing. Oh. Oh. These these orcs did not get along with her, so she hides. Captain starts to panic. All is not lost, I tell her. Magli Biet is with us. I mean this literally. I reach into my cloak and pull out an owl familiar named Magli Biet. (laughs) For fuck's sake. (laughs) I'm convinced he's actually an aspect of my daddy sent to help me in battle. Orcs and humans both get slaughtered. Ask the captain who we side with. No answer. I may have to rethink this chain of command. Use every resource I have to try to stop the fighting. Fog up the centre of the field. Send telepathic messages to the orcs trying to convince them I'm Gurmish. And the ship people are off limits. Zoss is not a dishonest hob. Not good at lying. No luck. Orc cleric runs out. I follow. Orc artificer asleep in the ship. Look, look, we've had this problem before with you, Petru, right? What the fuck is it? <laughs> this lack of discipline, Doc Giff. Orc soldier comes up to us. Before he can say a word, I go into drill mode. What the hell happened to your boots, soldier? I don't care. This is a battlefield. You will keep your equipment in tip-top shape. I will butcher you. Magli Biet will carve out your eyes. I will grind down your meat. I will serve you in the mess hall and your comrades will thank me for this improvement to their nutrition. Do I make myself clear, soldier? Well, I must say, at least we've got a proper captain now. Because <laughs> yeah. officially, I'm a captain, but, like, you know, let's be You're serious. You're a shit captain. Yeah, look, I, got, look, I, I know how to use navigators tools, right? <laughs> and I've got a really nice ship, okay? DM doesn't even ask for a roll. The orc just sits on the ground and starts polishing his boots while his unit is fighting for their lives 50 feet away. 
A couple other orcs see me doing this. By this point, the captain came to your senses and starts firing at the orcs. I know which side I'm on now. Send my oil to distract the Etten. Maglubiat, take to the skies. <laughs> Orc cleric aghast. Did you just command God? No, God and I just agree with each other. Orc cleric gets conflicted about fighting his own. Doesn't realise that racial solidarity is nothing next to the glory of following orders. I don't know, if I'm being honest with you, this spell genre server is pretty orc central. It is orc it's, central. It's, pretty, it's very goblinoid or... Yeah, it's Greenhaven. <laughs> it's Greenhaven, let's be serious. That and the Gobots. Yeah. That and a lot of Warforged. Runs up to the Etten and heals him. Runs back to us. Literally insubordination, dot JPG. Etten nearby has had enough with the captain shooting bolts at him. Grabs a human ballista and throws it at the ship. Clark gets hit. Downed and almost dead. Ship now has a giant fuck-off hole in it. Gonna take a day to fix. It would already not be fucked from the crash landing <laughs> know, anyway. Like, it, what it was, it was Jarbo. He, his ship it cost him something like over 100,000 in gold to get it fixed. Ooh. Ooh, it was nasty. Use my magic to blow the Etten's brains out. But Shining Orc hasn't even noticed my spellcasting. The humans are almost all dead, and an Orc horde is on the horizon. We might have chosen the wrong side on this. You need to remember, Jonathan does love his boys in green. He, was it Jonathan DMing this? Yeah, it was Jonathan DMing this, if he I believe. He loves his boys in green. He does. He's got a bit of a green boy fetish. <laughs> it's not a bad thing, though. I love my boys in green, too. Desperately go into damage control as the last humans are driven off and the horde approaches. Captain hides in the ship. Captain, you're shite. <laughs> they to be fair, he is only level five, but, yeah. like, come on. <laughs> they say to me, we got your message. What message? Oh, fuck. Who do they think I am? Orcs ride up. Ask me straight up. Did you help us in the battle? Answer, yes, obviously. Natural 20 deception. <laughs> hey, that's what I'm talking about. They pull me in and escort me off to their camp. Orc Artificer finally wakes up and lumbers out of the ship. Tries to convince them this is our ship. Off limits. They push him out of the way. Ransack it. They find the captain hiding inside. Pull her out and truss her up like Leia getting captured by the Ewoks. Oh. Hey guys, this is just a quick bit of promo. We got our website up and running and we have a massive restock on most of the models. However, one of the cool things about the website is if there's a model that you're waiting on, you can enter your email and be put on a waiting list. And it's not just good for you so then you'll know when they're restocked. We can also see what you guys are waiting on and what we should be printing. <laughs> so either way, the models are f by far the best way to support this channel and to help us do videos that YouTube would find inappropriate on the platform. <laughs> And, um, like, let's be serious, the models are pretty based looking, so, once again, just look at the titties. Look at the lizard titties! <laughs> but anyway, let's continue on with the video. They bring me back to their camp, shut the captain in a cell, but the rest of us get pulled into the celebrations. This tribe is ruled by an Eye of Gurmish. One of the orcs heard my telepathic message and thought I was an agent of his. Well, if my military experience has taught me anything, it's how to brown nose. I click my heels together and salute. Lance Corporal Zoss reporting for duty, representing Hobgoblin Naval High Command. I present to him my wand, carved from an elf bone. My shield forged from the hull of the first ship I destroyed, and my isle, a symbol of Maglubiat's favour. The eye likes this. The party builds rapport with him. I run off to meditate, actually messaging with the captain. The orcs are preparing a human stew, and they're eyeing the captain something nasty. We need to get out of here. Cleric knows orc law well enough. They won't lay a finger on her, since they think she's our prisoner. But they've already claimed our ship. We try to figure out if she has any bounties on her head, so that I could honestly state I needed her alive to earn her bounty. Nope, not a one. Turns out, this ship didn't even belong to the captain. She borrowed it from some rich friend. Oh, for fuck's sake, no, not... I you wee bastards. Is that your ship? No, it's not my ship. I lent fucking Cyrus 40,000 <laughs> for that ship, so I did. Oh, no. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Because I, I was asking Cyrus, so like, yo, you got that 40,000? like, yeah, uh, the captain knows you that nice. So he does. I was like, <laughs> all right, okay. It's You're a, never going to see the 40,000. It, it's a really nice galleon, to be honest with you. It is a really nice ship, but uh, seriously, guys. Fuck. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> my life is a lie, dot PNG. The captain transfers temporary possession of the ship to me, so I don't have to lie when I petition the Eye. I make it clear to her that I would be perfectly entitled to keep the ship and return it to its true owner. They'll give us the ship back, and even help repair it, if we help them take over the human settlement. Fucking deal! <laughs> it was very Australian, Megan, I must say. Was it? 
fucking deal. <laughs> Crikey, my <laughs> head. <laughs> they took the captain's equipment off her. Turns out she has a magical rapier and a self-loading, never dry, light crossbow. Meanwhile, here I was with just my shield and my mundane dagger. No armor. <laughs> Yoink. <laughs> <laughs> we tell the captain to sit tight. I rest and prepare my war magic, then start drilling the orcs. I'm taking command of this operation, and that means everything gets done by the book. Our force is composed of a squadron of orogs, a quartet of red fang assassins, an orc blade of Il Neville, played by the captain's player, two ballistas, and an Etten with a supply of boulders. We divide up the soldiers under each of our commands. I let the others take the fancy toys and the big bruiser. I keep my units small. Just two orogs and an assassin. I'm a war mage. The uninitiated think war magic is all big evocation spells. Fireballs and lightning bolts and acid arrows and death beams. I don't know a single one of those spells. I only know two which deal direct damage. I'm not an attention-seeking pyromaniac. I'm a soldier. With my glubiette, I survey the skies before the humans even know we are advancing towards them. I spy objects appearing and disappearing from sight. They have invisible casters hidden amongst them. I map out their ballistas, towers, walls and ramparts. We confer and make a battle plan. Maglubiette distracts the enemy and marks out targets while the Etten's boulders crushes their ballista. Our force splits in two. The other PCs keep their assassins nearby. I send mine over the wall to act independently. His mission? To seek and destroy any and all magic users. I keep my orogs close by, one on each shoulder. I don't stand behind my men, I stand in front of them. When a human pokes their head out from over the ramparts, I just signal. They fling javelins, I melt brains from afar, and we keep moving. The rest of the army is pounding hard at the southern gate. The Etten is launching boulders and clusters, and high value targets. A shield wall impedes their advancements. The orcs made a mistake bunching together to batter the shield wall. A wizard launches a fireball at them. The whole force could have been wiped out. It wasn't because I was ready with a counter spell. The orcs cheer and surge forward, battering the shield wall harder. My assassin is now behind the enemy lines. He spies one of the mages, the fucker that launched a fireball. It just takes one sneak attack, and the wizard is gushing blood from the neck and torso. <laughs> Never knew what hit him. I step right into the shield wall and break it with a thunder step, while acquiring a higher vantage point. Their shield wall retreats and reforms in another choke point, and I stick them together with web. I don't have to blast spells everywhere. I control the battlefield. The settlement's commander, a blackguard, retreats to a stone platform. His assassins bring him brimstone, tallow and iron. He summons up a huge fiery sphere, which expands with every passing moment. This is the enemy's Hail Magliviet, and with the whole orcish force contained in a tight corridor, this might spell the end for us. My assassin rushes from the bushes, slicing the blackguard in the back. He loses concentration, and the sphere fades. The assassin was less lucky. The blackguard struck him with terrible blows. A magical plus two greatsword throwing thunder smites almost kills him. Almost. He survived the assault with a tenth of his hit points. Even now, the enemy pulls one last ace from its sleeve. A ballista dragged into the town square. With the field looking like it is, it's bound to hit some parts of our forces. The other assassins come to the rescue. They had made like the Vietnamese and hidden the trees. <laughs> and they sent down magical darkness on the ballista. No shooting now. My assassin disengages and jumps into the safety of the magical darkness, throwing darts at the blackguard as he does so. I promised myself that, however the battle turned out, I would learn that assassin's name and thank him personally. We break their shield wall. We throw down their magics. We nullify their artillery. We butcher their men with only token losses on our side. One of those was friendly far from me. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> well, you know. The oh, see, that's really good for one of Jonathan's games. Yeah. Jonathan's game, ev like, honestly. Everyone dies. Like, Jonathan's killed over 30 people at this point. Yeah. <laughs> like, he's really bad at it, but he does get very, really good with it, so, yeah. you know. The cry goes up. We surrender! The Black Guard offers any of us a 1v1 in exchange for the lives of his men. The Blade of a Neville accepts. Maglubiet returns to my shoulder. My duty has been served, and well served, whatever happens here. Even badly injured, and facing a buffed opponent, the Blackguard makes short work of the duel. The orcish leader, the eyes representative on this mission, falls to the ground. 
decapitated. I hold the orcs back, and the blackguard leaves with his men and his dignity. They both knew the stakes. The battle was won, and our losses were small. The orcs lit three months of supplies from their camp. We cobbled together several hundred gold pieces, several suits of plate armour, and simple magic blade from the fallen elite warriors. The orcs have now won a new settlement and new ballistas. All three of the orcs I took under my command remain standing. I never took a hit point of damage. <laughs> that's pretty good going. That's, and, well, yeah. that's really good going for Jonathan's games. Yeah. I could not tell you the amount of times I've been knocked in the hole. Like, I've been knocked in the hole. Oh my god, it's so bad. I was the subject of a hostile effect only once, yet I turned the tide of battle. We return to the Eye of Gurmish, and Zoss presents one of the enemy's magical blades. They broke beneath our fist. There was much celebration. Our captain and ship were returned to us, and for my role in leading the assault, the eye offered me the pick of his armory. I selected a flame tongue rapier. You lucky oh, fucker. Fuck. I've been there. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I've been trying to get my hands on one of them bad boys for ages. <laughs> I might never need to use it, but this was a true commander's weapon. Yeah, it is. I suppose it doesn't really work well for Googs. Yeah. I've been one I've been begging for some form of poison off the boys for ages, but like, you know, what can <laughs> you do? What can you do? Before I left, I located the assassin who was assigned to me. He was still injured from his encounter with the blackguard, but was on the mend. His name was Gork. I thanked him for his excellent service and made him an offer. Leave his ground at home and travel the stars at my side. He accepted, with a promise of pay. He has no idea how much his services are actually worth, so I have time to get out of poverty while he figures it out. I return to the captain in her cell. I show her the rapier and crossbow of hers I had carried into battle. These are the tools of your trade. As is the ship, which I find is not yours but that of another. I would be within my rights to keep these weapons and the ship, and return it to its rightful owner with a full report on your wrongdoings. I cut her bonds and return her equipment, along with the ship. Let this gesture goodwill be the beginning of a long and fruitful partnership. The party returned to space. What adventures await for Zoss I do not know, only that he travels the stars with a wand of elfbone, a blade of flame, a shield of ship iron, and a demonic isle. Finn. Uh, that's pretty good. That's <laughs> yeah, a good week. That's don't. really good. I like that. Good on you, Zoss. I don't. I think he's only had like a couple games. Yeah. From the spell jam, he's, he's only played tier three now. But he's actually the DM for our Floss Maiden game. Mm-hmm. Megan's not able to join that because she's working. At I the work time. on Saturdays whenever it plays. So. Yeah. So she's not been able to get into it. I know. Big sad. Big sad. But no, also, I think you boys did really well because Jonathan's games are fucking deadly. Um. He kills a lot of people. Like, he must have killed Teal at least three or four times now. Oh, yeah. Like, Teal's just got his head kicked in, like, repeatedly. Yeah. That's why any time Jonathan's in his game, Teal just tries his best, but he, <laughs> Teal's rules are shit. And he can't get it. <laughs> well, no, he, his character is dead now. He's playing at work oh, nice well, yeah, is. but before. <laughs> yeah, he was playing. He, well, he did pretty good with that cursed sword. Like, yeah. guys, sorry, we're rambling. What we will say is, we'll tell you guys about the, uh, the problem we have with the Lich. That was kind of me, Megan, and Hercules. No, no, that was Megan and Hercules that stood by, stayed that silent and, and in nothing. the corner, and you done all the talking. Well, I pretty much recreated, you know, Benny from uh, the Mummy franchise. No, what James was was like um, a merchant salesman. No, it, yeah, sorts? no, he's like a car dealer, do a lich. Yeah, okay, look, okay, trying well, to sell the lich like this, like. Banger. <laughs> yeah, okay, so what happens was um, we started this back in Halloween. It was, it's Tim of Horrors. You know, yeah. you guys know Tim of Horrors. Uh, we were playing that. It's the first time me and Megan have ever actually played it. I know the basic gist, but I've never actually like went into it. All I know is it's extremely difficult, extremely yeah. hard, very unforgiving, and a lot of people complain about it. It's like, yeah. you know what? Fuck it. We'll give this a go. Very happy. Only one person died for the entire time. Yeah. It took us four sessions. Um, but whenever we got to the end, where we met the lich, oh well, okay, there was but, only three of us. No, well, we'll tell you why that came about. So what happened was, you remember, you know, the gender bender room in the, um, you know, in like the church part. Maybe that, maybe that was tails. I don't know Maybe if that Teal was Teal. Put that in. I don't know if Teal put that in or if that's official. But what we did was to try and make some money out of it. So we uh, we were paying. Uh, well, we weren't paying, but we were advertising um, sex changes. <laughs> yes. Um, we got five thousand. We gold made quite through. a lot of money. We made a lot of money. Honestly, we made a hundred and eighty thousand in one trip. Yeah. That, that paid for the fleet. I will say. However, some of them did die because um, two d six psychic damage yeah. and commoners 
chances of them dying pretty high. Yeah. So we had kind of already been serving the glitch to a certain extent, you know, and he was kind of happy with us. Like, anyway, continue Next. to the end. Oh. So uh, we go up to the glitch and he starts talking to us. He's like, oh, yeah. He's going to kill you. No, uh, no. And we're like, no, no, no. No, 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 no wait. No, no, do not. I'm telling you. Megan didn't don't say bring fuck. You, I did, mean, you didn't say fucking anything. I was around the corner. Look, there was three of us. Where I was level, I think I was level eight at the time. You're level seven. seven and Hercules is level seven as well. We were we're gonna get a head kicked in bed. Like only three of us. Uh, two gugs and a two gugs and a warrior or a fighter. Sorry, we're not gonna win against no. Demi. Let's let's be serious. So we gotta do some smooth talking. Um, well, you done all the time. Look, I did a little bit of smooth talking. We set him up. So like, anyway, we ended up selling our souls to a lech. Like, um, it was either and or- he moved. To Diner World. Um, so he is, is Which uh, is also the home of all of your goblin friends. I know, I know. So we now we have to get... We need, we'll, we'll, we'll work it out, okay? <laughs> I just want to get the goblins off and I really want to save the dinosaurs. It's either that or what we're going to do is... So the to, the tomb that the glitch was located on was on a comet. We we have the comet now. We have the, we comet. the comet. We actually own the comet. So what we're doing is we are working to get some dwarves. We've already found some dwarven artisans that will put a dwarven helm on the comet that will be able to steer it. It's like going to put on like a big engine on it. So basically... We're gonna, we're, James, gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna come at Dino World, guys. D- James <laughs> yes. and his goblin. Yeah. Um, basically, you're building the Death Star. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I, that's what I would like to do. Um, we'll see how it goes. We do really need to sweep that lich out. I don't think. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. With I don't lich. know what's going to happen. To be honest with you, I'm just happy I haven't died yet. I'm ver- I'm very connected with Gobby. Gobby's a really nice nice bloke. <laughs> yeah. Top top fella. Reminds me of Benny. Doesn't shut the fuck up in the <laughs> right, like in the worst possible decisions. Like, you should have just stepped up and been like, "No, Mister Glitch, I'm gonna fucking smash your head in," you know? Because he was just sitting there. Yeah, I should have. Like, we should have just done something. Like, time and a place. We never know. Like, hope you guys enjoyed this one. It was nice to do a story that was from. Well, we weren't in this specific one. Yeah, we weren't in but... this like game, but. Of people that we, we know. are, we do play with the people that are yeah. in it, and it was quite nice. Yeah, uh, we might do some more. As also is, of course, the DM for the Frost Maiden game we play on Saturday. So he might be doing like light ups for that. We might make a bit of a series for it. Yeah, we might. We'll see how it goes. Like, you know, I've got a lot of plans for twenty twenty one, and we'll just find out. And I hope everyone had a lovely Christmas break, well as much as you could with yeah, everything, of course, going, everything on. going on. Like we're we've been going on long enough, but it's nice to be back. Hopefully everything's going well for you guys and uh we'll see you then. Alright? Yeah. Bye.